Righty, hey guys, welcome to another test review on Zebra's Samba Hunting Adventures. Um, in light of the proposed regulation changes for Victoria in regards to the banning of lead core projectiles, I thought it might be of interest to a few people out there that mightn't really know or, ha or have had any experience with monolithic or full copper lead free projectiles. So I approached a couple of Aussie-made uh, projectile companies, um, Outer Edge up in New South Wales and Atomic 29 in South Australia. Both make quality products, and I thought what a great way to promote a couple of companies and do some testing at the same time. So they kindly donated these projectiles, so give them a big shout-out. Um, Want to sort of really help... Uh, Australian made stuff and uh, if we do have to switch over to a all copper bullet um, why not do it in-house in Australia but what we what we're testing here uh, today is not accuracy I didn't do any load work up with these projectiles I basically just loaded to safe pressures from uh, loading manual and went and shot them into um, plastic tubs full of wet rags and filled with water so the tubs were filled with water so all the rags were soaked overnight so they're completely saturated and then i was topping up the tubs with water until they were overflowing so basically the tubs uh, were full of rags stuffed in there as many as i could get in and then soaked with water until it was overflowing believe it or not that caught 99% of these projectiles in the first tub. A few did penetrate through into a second tub, but majority were found at the backside of that first tub. Now, there were a couple exceptions to that where uh, we had a bit of a, a failure to expand uh, at distance. So we um, made up a tub with loamy soil just to give it a little bit more resistance and then we retested. I tested with a 300 wind mag, a 3006 and a 308 from projectile weights from 200 grain lead core, Hornady ELDX, just for one comparison to a lead core. Um, from outer edge, we tested a 160 ball bearing tip, a 150 grain hollow point and a 140 grain um, ball bearing tip. And from Atomic 29, we tested a 175 grain, a 155, and a 130. So we tried to match the projectiles to the different cartridges. Obviously, your 300 wind mag being a Magnum, uh, we used larger weight projectiles because they have the velocity to push them out there, the powder capacity to, to get that velocity out there. Now, if you're not familiar with monolithic, velocity is their friend. Realistically, you can't push these fast enough, or too fast, I should say. You can't push a monolithic or copper projectile too fast. They will generally work, expand really well under quite high velocities. The same can't be said for a cup and core jacketed lead core projectile some of them are just too soft to be run at magnum speeds velocities for instance if you had 300 weatherby or a 300 rum something like that a prc even your 300 wind mag and you popped in a, a 140 grain uh, sierra uh, cup and core lead tip it's just going to explode at at 100 yards it's really not going to do much uh, in the way of hold together probably still going to get the job done but what i'm getting at is each cartridge has has its own velocity range and with with the higher velocity you can go a bigger projectile and with the lower velocity velocity cartridges like your 308 you really do want to drop weight with your monolithic anyway so we've got the test all completed it took a lot of time now, I was going to try and film some stuff in the field, but to be honest with you guys, it was pretty boring. I videoed a little bit of it, and I just went, no one's going to want to see that. Me digging around in rags, trying to find a projectile, um, 
shooting into the thing wasn't very dramatic. It just pinholed in and there was a little bit of a spray of water. Um, so basically, we're just going to sit here and talk about it. Um, I'm going to throw up some information on so velocities from the muzzle, impact at 100, 200, and 300 yards, um, starting bullet, bullet weight and re retained bullet weight at those different yardages, um, and also the diameter expansion at those different um, ranges as well. So what you'll notice with the monolithic is they retain their weight extremely well. Now, all through both manufacturers' um, monolithic projectiles, they held 99 or higher percent weight retention. So practically, they lose half of 1% of their original weight before fired. When you compare that to a Hornady ELDX, which is a classic cup and core projectile with a... Um, plastic tip or polymer tip, it lost between 50 and 43% of its weight. So its weight retention was between 50 and 57% from the original projectile weight. So a 200 grain projectile at 100 yards was working out to be roughly 100 grains. And then we gained a couple of grains at 200, so 102 grains. And then at 300, it bumped up to 114 grains. Um, all perfect mushrooms, all penetrated really deep. Um, and all projectiles would have definitely killed the animal if it was hitting the right placement. So that was just a good comparison. Um, I didn't go through and do uh, lead core for all the others because... They're going to all perform relatively close to that. All right, so we're going to go through some of the numbers just so that you can um, get a good idea on how they performed. Um, I will cut to some close-ups of the projectiles so you can get a good look at them. Um, and I'll also throw up a table of velocities, uh, diameters, and weight retention just so that you can pause the video if you really want to um, and check out those uh, figures. So let's start with um, the cup and core, lead, lead core projectile from Hornady, 200 grain ELDX. Now, Hornady have done a great job of marketing the ELDX. Uh, I practically use them in all calibers um, that I own, and they've performed well for me. They're quite accurate, they're easy to get to shoot. Um, and so therefore, and they're also readily available in Australia. So it really makes it easy to grab a packet of ELDX off the shelf and away you go. They also do quite a uh, good factory loading in their Hornady Precision Hunter for most calibers. So therefore, if you're not a hand loader, you can still get your hands on these projectiles. But we tested uh, the 200 grainer in a 300 wind mag. Now, starting velocities, this is a 26-inch uh, barreled rifle. We're somewhere around that 2,940 feet a second. Yeah, that's pretty pretty fast for a 20, uh, 200 grainer. Now, our impact velocity uh, at 100 yards is estimated at 2,779. Now, let's just keep going with that. Weight retention was... 108 grains or about 50 percent diameter of the expanded projectile was 21.7 so really quite a, a big expansion as you can see by the big hunk of copper jacket hanging off the sides quite ragged would have done some really good cutting still got some good lead in it but uh, and a base but it's really expanded out quite well now 200 yards we had an impact velocity of 26 23 and a weight retention of 101.7 grains roughly 51 percent and a 14.6 diameter mushroom so we've we've narrowed up because of the velocity slowed down it's not quite as uh, violent an impact 
but projectile still penetrated really well. Now, I didn't measure the penetration, but what I did notice with the 200 grainer was it was penetrating very similar to distance-wise to your 175 grain from the Atomic 29 and the 160 from Outer Edge. Although that these guys started out a lot lighter, I think their velocity and just their weight retention pushes them just as deep, if not a little bit deeper than the 200 grainer. Anyway, continue on. 300 yards, we had uh, an impact velocity of 24.74 and a weight retention of 114.12 grains, which is about 57% of the original weight and an expanded bullet to 14.4 millimetres. Anyway, so that was sort of our control to compare against. Uh, all those projectiles at those three distances performed perfectly uh, and were all captured in the first tub too, at the back side of the first tub. Now, the next one I uh, tested was the Outer Edge 160 ball bearing tip. Now, if you haven't checked out Outer Edge, jump over to Facebook. They're on there. They've also got a website. Ball bearing tip means in the cavity of the monolithic projectile, which is what uh, promotes the expansion, they've actually inserted a little ball bearing. And that's just to increase the ballistic coefficient a little bit and to fill in that uh, hollow point. Um, yeah, so our velocity on the outer edge 160 grainer was estimated at 3,100 feet a second from the muzzle and an impact velocity at 100 yards of 2,887 and we had 159.36 grains of weight retention. So it's over 99%, guys. Basically, all the monolithic held 99, 99.5% uh, weight retention, basically losing next to nothing. Um, so expanded bullet at 100 yards with the outer edge was 16.6. Now, remembering that 0.308 cal is 7.82 millimetres, so we're over double expansion. At 200 yards, we had an impact velocity of 26.86, same again, 99% weight retention or higher and an expansion of 17 millimetres on that mushroom. So slightly more, only by half of a mil. At 300 yards, 24.94 was our expected impact velocity. Once again, 99% weight retention and 17 millimetre diameter mushroom. Absolutely perfect mushrooms these guys were. Um, and all penetrated really well. So there you go. Those guys, you know, expansion-wise, the apart from the 100-yard one, uh, outperformed the lead core, and they penetrated just as far, if not a little bit further, from a lighter weight projectile. So how do they do that? Weight retention, basically. If you retain weight, it retains momentum, and it'll drive in deeper. So what you'll find with all your monolithic projectiles is if you traditionally shot a 180 grain, say in your 300 wind mag or even in your 30A6, you could comfortably drop down to 150, 160 grains, um, gain velocity, so you'll get a flatter trajectory, um, but you'll still have the same amount of penetration and um, with that double expansion on the projectile, you're going to get a good wound cavity. So let's continue on. Um, Atomic 29, 175 grainer. Let's find them. Right, oh, no, here they are. So a muzzle velocity, 29.30. At 100 yards, we had an impact velocity of 27.19. And weight retention was 99.5%. Expansion was to 16.4. At 200 yards, we had an uh, impact velocity of 25.19. Once again, 99% weight retention, 16.8 expansion. At 300 yards, we had an impact velocity of 23.27, 99% weight retention, 
and 18.4. This one actually opened up really, really well. Now, as you can see, perfect mushrooms, nice expansion, practically 100% uh, weight retention. So these, these projectiles here would do really well in any big game that you're prepared to go after. Now, when we drop down to the 3006, we lose velocity. So with your monolithic projectiles, velocity is your friend. Without velocity, these guys do not expand. So there is limitations to copper, as there is for any other projectile, lead core or not, um, but they're more pronounced, what I've found, in, in copper. There's definitely a velocity that you need to impact at, otherwise you're going to run into some real problems. So let's have a look at 3006. So Outer Edge sent me some 150 grain hollow points. So these guys do not have a ball bearing in the uh, opening. So they're just drilled and, and they're an open projectile. Now, muzzle velocity is about 2880 from a 150 grain out of the 3006. Um, our impact velocity at 100 yards was 2608 with 149 grains weight retention so it's 99 percent once again our diameter of the expansion was out to 15.4 so still double the diameter remember 7.8 is 308 cal uh, going to 200 yards 2351 was the impact velocity 150 grains so but practically 100 percent and 14.8, so still really good expansion. Just under double the top, double the, the diameter. At 300 yards, impact velocity of 21.11, 150 grains, uh, weight retention, 13.6. So we did narrow up a little bit. Um, as you can see, uh, you've got a lot of shank and we've got three pedals pulled right out, but still quite good expansion. Uh, more than one and a half is kind of what you're looking for, and these guys are sort of in that bracket. Now, when we come over to the Atomic 29, we've got we've got a little bit to talk about. So, all these were all tested into the same rags to the same spot on the range. Basically, everything was kept the same. Kept topping up the water when it, when I plugged up a hole, so that everything was the same. So with the 3006 and the Atomic 155 grainer, we had a muzzle velocity of 28.50. Now at 100 yards, it's impacting at 25.75. We had 99% weight retention and 17.3 millimetres in expansion. So more than twice the diameter. So great expansion. Now when we come out to 200 yards, we had an impact velocity of 23.20. 20. 100% uh, weight retention and 16 millimetres expansion. So um, still more than double. Awesome. When we come to 300 yards, we had a failure. So at 2,078 feet per second, we had 100% weight retention and we had zero expansion. Now, the very end has opened up a couple of millimetres, but it has not started to pedal back. It hasn't peeled back at all. I found it, it penetrated through the first tub, through the second tub, and I found it in the dirt, about three inches into the dirt at the back of the tub. So practically, it was a full metal jacket and just straight through, zero expansion. Now, I contacted Atomic29 and had a good chat to Cameron, and he suggested that uh, the rags probably weren't enough resistance, and he had... Uh, mentioned that really nice loamy sandy soil was a better representation of flesh so I reshot it and at 300 yards we came up with this projectile which retained 153.74 grains so practically 99% and it expanded to 17.2 so massive expansion so it seems that these projectiles from Atomic 29 just need a little bit more resistance to open up at that lower velocity. So the velocity again on that 3006 was 20, uh, 2,078 feet per second. 
So it's quite low in velocity. So we did have a failure into the wet rags and water, but once we increased the uh, resistance into that loamy soil, we got a great expanded projectile. Make of that what you will, um, but where the uh, limitations with copper is, it's in velocity, impact velocities. Nothing. To, don't worry about your uh, muzzle velocity, it's the impact velocity. So what you need to do is work out what your muzzle velocity is, put it into a ballistic calculator, and then run down the list of uh, yardages that your, hunt, your normal hunting ranges are. So if you're capable to 300 yards, come down to 300 yards and have a look at that impact velocity. If it's below 2,000 feet per second, I wouldn't be comfortable using a monolithic projectile. Any of them. All right, let's go to the 308. Now, there couldn't be any more popular calibers than these three, but 308 and 3006, oh, especially 308, I know a lot of you guys out there are using them. A lot of my clients use them. So this is going to be right down your alley. One 40 grain ball bearing tip from outer edge. Muzzle velocity, somewhere around 2,900 feet a second. 140 grain bullet. So at 100 yards, we had impact velocity of 2664, 99% weight retention, and 15.1 millimeters expansion. So practically double expansion still with a 308. At 200 yards, 2439 was our impact velocity. 99% weight retention, 13.4. So we're losing a little bit of our expansion, but it's still a really nice mushroom held together really well. At 300 yards, 22.27 was our impact velocity for this one here. 100% weight retention and 12.7 millimetres. So still one and a half times diameter. Um, so really good expansion still at that lower velocity and I'd have no dramas using any of those out to that sort of distance. When we come across to the Atomic 29, you'll see we've had another failure, but let's talk about what it did really well. So 29.50 feet per second with a 130 grainer. Impact velocities at 100 was 26.62, 100% weight retention and 15.2 millimetres in diameter expansion for that first projectile it's a crazy good mushroom it's pulled right down onto the shank um, really nice sharp edges would be doing some good cutting at 200 we had an impact velocity of 23.92 100% weight retention and 16.1 so it's actually uh, it's got one pedal just came out a little bit wider and just made it a, a wider mushroom still got a, a heap of shank all weight retained um, and a great diameter now at 300, we had the same thing happen as we did at 300 with the 30A6. So our expected impact velocity at 300 was 21.39. So you can see a bit of a common thing here. This one was 2,078 or something. So in around about that 2,100 feet per second, uh, the Atomic 29 didn't want to expand in the wet rags and water. So once again, through uh, talking to Cameron, I replaced the rags with some loamy sandy soil and I shot it again at 300 yards and we ended up with this magnificent um, projectile here, mushroomed out. Um, so we lost two grains more uh, than the rest of the projectiles and but we're still in that 99% uh, weight retention and it expanded out to an incredible 17 millimetres. So with the resistance, hitting bone or something solid, maybe a, a rib on the way in, these projectiles are going to expand really well. What I worry about with all of the monolithic projectiles is at low velocities and you come in behind the shoulder, whether intentionally or just the way it works out, and you don't hit a rib or something on the way in, that these projectiles at distance are not going to expand very well and they're going to zip straight through. Now, if the projectile goes through the lungs, you've put a hole in the lungs regardless of how small it is, but it's probably going to be a tracking job uh, to recover that animal. 
So let's talk a little bit about the differences between cup and core lead projectiles and monolithic when it comes to wound channels. Now I have killed a few deer with monolithic, but I've killed way more with lead lead core projectiles. 20 years ago, we used to, to run a Hornady round nose, which was a cup and core. It used to mushroom out perfectly, but most of our hunting was done at 100 yards or less. Then we, when we moved on from there, I went to a, a, a Spear Grand Slam, which is actually a bonded projectile. I hunted with them for years and years and years, and they did amazing things. Um, always performed really well, mushroomed out great, held around about 70% of their uh, original weight, so they actually penetrated quite well, but the, the, the design of their nose made them expand really well as well. After that, I went to a 200 grain Acubond. Now, another bonded bullet. And they also held about 70, 65, 70% of their uh, original weight, expanded to almost double their um, original starting diameter and penetrated really well as well. After um, moving on from bonded and I started shooting Hornady ELDX, I've gone to a cup and core, albeit with a small retention ring in the base or in the shank. Now that's designed to sort of lock that rear portion of the lead in. So the front will expand out and down and that ring sort of holds that base of the lead in there trying to retain some of that weight. Now looking at the projectiles I've recovered and the ones that I've recovered from deer, it's 100% what these projectiles do. I don't generally find that the core separates from the rear of the projectile on the ELDX, but you definitely lose all that front portion. So with that in mind, I always like to shoot heavy for calibre projectiles when you're using a cup and core like an ELDX. Why? Because you are going to lose 50% of that projectile to shrapnel. Now, for me, that's a good thing. That expands and creates a very large wound channel especially at the start when you've just penetrated through and it's going to throw jacket and lead all through the lung uh, and kill zone right so you're going to end up with a like a shotgun blast sort of wound cavity and then it'll narrow up because those um, those bits of shrapnel don't carry any weight so they will not penetrate to the other side of the animal in general so it's a very short burst of shrapnel and then what you get is the rest of that projectile held together will go through to the other side, quite often just under the skin on the opposite side of the shoulder. So that's kind of my experience with cup and core. Um, you do get that quite aggressive uh, expansion, and when you skin the animal, you'll see a lot of, bruising and, and, and meat damage. If you've hit a, uh, any kind of bone, there's shrapnel from the bone, there'll be lead there. Um, so from an eating point of view, you definitely want to discard all that area there um, so that you don't really end up chewing on a bit of lead or jacket. Now comparing that to a mono, monolithic projectile, all copper, lead free, however you want to go about it, doesn't really matter what brand, we're looking at they all roughly perform similar not the same similar 100% weight retention is or 99% is very common with a monolithic projectile so they hold their weight the problem with copper and all their alloys that they use because Hornady are claiming they use a, a, a zinc alloy something or other is size for size a here we go a 175 grain and a 200 grain so a 175 grain uh, monolithic and a 200 grain uh, cup and core lead core are practically the same now if you imagine putting a polymer tip on the top of this monolithic projector you'd nearly say it's a 200 grain projector but it's not so 
Where we run into trouble with monolithic is if you go the same weight as a lead core bullet, you end up with a much longer bullet because the only way to get more weight in a projectile because we're governed by the diameter is to go longer. Now the shape has a little bit to do with the length. The pointier uh, your nose is, the longer the projectile. If you start putting boat tails on it, the longer the projectile. Now the problem with that is twist rates. Now in your modern rifles, we're going a lot tighter in our twist rates, but in our old school 30A6, it's a, it's a Tika, it's one in 11 twist. Uh, my wind mag is one in 10. So if you start looking at shooting some bigger projectiles in those calibers in monolithic, you're gonna run into twist rate problems. So generally, you've got to drop down a size or two, so 200 grain down to 180, even to 168, something like that, um, like 160, to stay within your twist rate. Um, but what I've found is the performance from the lighter projectile is very similar to the performance of the bigger projectile in the uh, lead core. Now, you might be saying, but velocity times weight equals energy. So if we believe that energy kills deer, then we've, we're, we're gonna scrap all the monolithic because we're gonna be shooting a lighter projectile and it just can't have the same energy as a big lead core. Simple, just can't match it. But where it can match it is in expansion diameter and having that nice square surface. Now, if we look at um, hydraulic shock or the impact value of a projectile, it's directly correlated to the surface area of the front of the projectile. So if we're looking at the front of this projectile, you can see that the, it's expanded quite well. And that front surface area is going to have a shock wave off the front of it pushing forward. Um, so don't discount monolithic as not having energy. So, so what you gain with the monolithic is velocity. So you will get a flatter trajectory, which these days is probably less important than it was 20 years ago with the, the way that uh, hunting has gone with dial-up scopes now. Um, the old holdover method is used by very few people nowadays. But if you are still old school holdover style hunter, then a monolithic at a lower bullet weight with a higher velocity is going to allow you to allow less um, because of the flatter trajectory. Now the downside to that is their BCs are lower compared to uh, the same size projectile would be heavier in a lead core. So they're ballistic coefficient is higher, but also um, although their velocity will be lower because of the heavier weight, they don't drift as much in the wind. So with a higher ballistic coefficient, you get less wind drift. When we compare monolithic to lead core, the BCs of the lead core are higher. Ballistic coefficient helps you at long distance with wind drift. So when you drop down a size or two, you do gain velocity with a monolithic, but that does not uh, equate to less wind drift at distance. You'll find this 200 grainer will drift a whole heap less than this 160, even though this has got a couple hundred feet a second on it. There's a couple things to consider when we're looking at monolithic projectiles. Do they do the job? Yes, they do. They do have their limitations, just like any other projectile does, but they're more pronounced with a copper bullet. Distance and velocity. If you're long, a long distance hunter, monolithic projectiles are not going to be your thing. I would comfortably hunt with uh, a monolithic in the 300 wind mag, probably out to 500 yards. That'd be it. Any further than that, you're gonna be asking for problems. When we drop down to 3006, 
I'm going to pull that into 300. So a lot of people might be going, well, that's, that's not very far. Well, it's more than what most people are capable of if they were honest with themselves. So your 308 and your 3086 at 300 yards have enough expansion to reliably kill your animal. You can extend that with velocity. 300 wind mag, 300 rum. Um, if you jump up into your big seven mils, you're gonna have the velocity to expand that projectile at further distance. But what you really wanna take note in is somewhere around that 2100 feet a second is where you're gonna to start to have um, failure. So if you look on your ballistic table where that 2100 feet per second mark is, that's about the cutoff where you could uh, reliably uh, expect a monolithic bullet to expand. So for longer range hunting with a monolithic, you really need to step up to a magnum cartridge. You're not gonna be doing it in a non-magnum, not reliably anyway. So after doing the review on these projectiles, I'd confidently say I'd hunt with any of them if I kept within the comfortable range of each cartridge. Um, now I believe with either of the outer edge or the Atomic 29 in a 300 wind mag, you're gonna be able to hunt all the way out to 500 yards, um, which is more than enough for the average hunter. When we drop down to the 3006, the outer edge seemed to perform uh, slightly better into the softer material of the wet rags than the Atomic 29. Um, it seemed to need a little bit more velocity than, than the uh, outer edge to expand. Having said that, at 100 and 200 yards, it actually expanded more than the outer edge. The same sort of thing happened with 308. The outer edge did uh, expand all the way at 300 yards into the wet rags, whereas we had a failure with the 308 with the Atomic 29. In saying that, at 100 and 200 yards into the wet rags, it expanded much more than the outer edge. So at those normal hunting ranges, the Atomic 29 performed perfectly. It's only when we got out to that uh, lower velocity impact that we started to see failure. Now, when I increased the resistance to dirt, we had great uh, expansion on both 3006 and 308. So if you're gonna hit uh, bone or anything like that, we're gonna get that expansion. The only thing is, if you come back and miss a rib, I just wonder whether or not they would expand on a deer at 300 yards or at that low velocity of 21, 2000 feet per second. Just wanted to make special mention that neither Steve from Outer Edge or Cameron from Atomic 29 are in support of the banning of lead core projectiles. Um, they're both fairly vocal about keeping the choice and on with them. We should have the choice to choose what projectiles we use. Um, so make sure that you get your voice heard, do the petitions, fill out the surveys, and uh, do everything you can to make sure that the regulatory people understand that we're not in favor of this um, new regulation. Having said that, if we do have to go to monolithic projectiles, we do have choice, so it's not the end of the world. If you have enjoyed this review, give me a thumbs up, make a comment, and uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Now, if you're looking for more content from me, jump over to my Patreon page. There'll be a link in the description. And from there, you can join up to the free one if you like. There's a little bit of content there for free, um, but then there's a staggered tier system there, which gives you more and more um, content. So if you could, that'd help me out a ton. Um, this takes a lot of time to do stuff like this and it just makes it all worthwhile. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you on the next one.